Hello everybody, this is Jack Dennis and welcome to our fly fishing and tying channel. I hope you're all having a good start to the new year and out tying a lot of flies. Uh, we started uh, a couple weeks ago with our Jack Dennis and Friends fly tying session. Uh, our first one was with uh, Dave Allison and I'm going to be showing you some from the past. One of the things I've been involved with uh, my fly tying career is setting up fly tying theaters and been involved with the many conclaves that fly fishing groups and clubs have over the country. And they uh, really highlight tires that you may not have ever met. And one of the best ones is one in Idaho, both the Western Idaho Expo and the uh, Eastern Idaho Expo, which is in Idaho Falls. Uh, they've been doing these fly tying get togethers for a long time. We're talking over 30 years. So I want to do some highlights from some that I filmed in 2009 and 2010. And you will get a chance to meet some names you know, and some, maybe some names you didn't know. And one of the nice things about tying at these expos is all the uh, excitement and sounds of people going around telling lots and lots of fly fishing stories. Most of them may be exaggerated. But one of the nice things about the theater is you get a chance to listen to the tires talk about it, their experiences uh, and, and answer questions. I, I think you're going to enjoy them. Uh, we're going to start this uh, week with uh, uh, several. Uh, we'll try to give you the most information. And I know some of you are going to say, wow, you know, I don't know about the materials. Well, these are really uncut. So, you know, you do your best on figuring it out. But I think you're going to enjoy the interaction uh, with the crowd and with the tires. And really, uncut un and, I think, extremely fun. Let's get going. I'm sure you're going to enjoy the next fly tire. His name is Bill Heckel. He passed away in 2017, but in 2012, he was at the Eastern Idaho Fly Tying Fair, demonstrating his buy-up flies. He had been tying since the early 70s and was very involved with the Federation of Fly Fishermen who has taught fly tires and fly fishermen throughout the country for over 50 years. Bill is one of the great tires, and you will enjoy his look at fly tying. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, this fly what I'm, that I'm going to tie is going to be a, a pattern that it has a little bit of history to it. Uh, I have a good friend by the name of Ted Niemeyer, and um, about 20 years ago, Ted in introduced me to uh, the technique of doing a tape wing for, uh, for flies, especially for a caddis fly. Now, the, uh, the history on this is that Ted did not develop it and I did not develop it. This technique actually came from Russia. And uh, how it got to the United States uh, sometime back, uh, Lee and Joan Wolf, uh, representing Trout Unlimited, went to Russia. And they were introduced to a fellow who they touted as being the premier fly tire in Russia. And um, one of Ted's friends from Southern California was with them. And uh, so after the, they were about ready to come home, this in individual purchased a bunch of the flies, uh, sets of flies from this fellow, and he gave two sets of them to Ted, and Ted looked at him and says, you know, you just cannot cut, cut feathers and make them stay together like this. Well, he finally took one apart and discovered that there was scotch tape on the underside of the wing. And he said, I hot-footed it upstairs, got the scotch tape, brought it back down, made a set of wings, and put the thing in a dish of water, and, of course, it dissolved. And the reason it dissolved, the, the, the adhesive on standard scotch tape is um, 
water soluble. It's a, so he said, he told me, he said, if you can find an honest to God waterproof cement, it'll really work great, and it has. But it took me a while to get uh, for 3M to catch up to with what, <laughs> I shouldn't be, say this, but for what I was doing, and uh, now we have it. And what I'm using here is 3M Scotch brand, tear by hand, packaging tape. It is, honest to gosh, waterproof. The first time I used this, I made a set of flies. I was tying the Midwest Fly Show, and I took a set of wings home and I put them in a dish, left them overnight, and they were fine. By the end of the next day, they had started to come apart, but I, don't keep, I can't keep a fly that long. So it's waterproof enough for me. You don't have to put anything on this fly, no floating, no nothing. So what, you're gonna, what, I, what I prefer to use for my winging are hen saddle patches. They're inexpensive, they're, uh, they are symmetrical, and what you need to do is you make, when you first get started, make sure that the quill is straight, it's not curved. And we'll talk about that in a minute. But what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take this after I get it right, all the excess stuff I, I don't want off of the quill, and, re, and you need to keep the quill as a handle to work with. But I'm gonna take the dull side of the feather and I'm going to place the dull side of the feather onto the whoops, onto the uh, adhesive side of the tape. And taking care to make sure that when you get it on the tape, the quill is still, I don't, I'll get it over here, maybe you can see. You can still see that the quill is straight, all right? So what I'm going to do, well, I didn't get my burnisher up, but I'll use this. You need to burnish this feather so that the flues are well embedded in the adhesive side of the tape. Now, an interesting thing about this technique is that you can prefab your wings. If you don't feel like tying anything some night, you say, well, I really gotta do something. You could go downstairs and prefab a whole bunch of wings. So we're ready to get the feather off of the roll of tape. You do, even though it is hand terrible, I highly recommend that you cut pa almost past the, the feather before you try to tear the tape. Because what I found in my experience, you end up with the tear going under the feather and it makes a mess of everything. The next step before you do anything else, and it's very important, is you turn the corner of this tape down so you can find it when you come back to use it again. And what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to get, get rid of this excess tape, make it a little easier to, to work with. Now, this is what you want the feather to look like when it's adhered to the tape. Now the reason for the straight quill is you are going to fold this feather and the quill is going to be the apex of your tent wing. If that quill is crooked, it changes the symmetry of your wing and your wing will turn into a propeller. It'll just twirl around on the end of your leader and you don't want that to happen. So, make sure it's straight. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold this feather and I'm going to keep the quill right on the fold. And I will hold it up so you can see what it looks like. There's what it looks like. Can everybody see that again? Now, I'm tying on a size 14 hook. And I know that the, a size 14 caddis wing needs to be 15 millimeters long. That's why I always have a machinist rule here with millimeters on it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place this on top of the rule so that the tip of the feather is at 
Well, sit still there. 15 millimeter mark. I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to trim the feather to length. And at this point, this is what your feather looks like. The next step is to shape the quill, the, the wing. And you'll notice I still have the, the quill left on the feather. Where that comes into play, and it, where it really becomes important, is when you're tying micro caddis, the 18s, 20s, 22s, 24, you've got something to hold on to. Because my hands, I can't hold them. I, you know, I don't know about anybody else, but they're, they're just too big to hold that, part, that, that small of a piece of material. What I'm going to do is take my scissors. Can you see? Yeah, you can see that. I'm going to cut a little notch right into the tape. I'm going to slide my scissors in there. Start this again. I'm going to slide my scissors into that, that little notch. And I'm just going to make a straight cut. And now you have your feather looking like like this. Now, having mentioned the micro caddis, you can't curb shape the wing the way you can on a 16 or 14 or 12 or a 10 or an 8 or whatever. So what I normally will do on those size flies, I will make a 45 degree cut up and just trim the points off. And it does not affect the effectiveness of the fly. Okay, it's time to shape the wing. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my scissor, scissors, I'm going to slide them up against the base of the tape and start trimming. And all you do is, if anybody can remember when they were in grade school, and cut hearts, that's essentially what you're doing here. And there is your caddis wing. Now, I have already smashed the, the barb down on this hook, which is the first thing you should always do. And what I'm going to do is, we are first off, well, I'm, I, and let me back up a bit. I always palmer the body of this fly. You don't necessarily have to do it, but if you are fishing different kinds of water, say, flat water, flat smooth water, you really don't need to palmer the body. But if you ever have a chance, if you're in a situation where you're fishing some real heavy pocket water, the, the palmering of the body in, traps an additional amount of air, air bubbles under the wing of the fly, and in, it actually enhances the, the floatability of it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take, a, take my feather, the feather for the palmering. I'm going to bind it in so it stays right on top of the hook shank. Right like this. Okay. Time to do the dubbing. So we put some wax on your thread. And all I'm going to do is just touch dub this. And then what we're going to do is just spin your bobbin so that the dubbing wraps completely around your thread. And then you're going to mat the material down, and you always mat it in the same direction that you spun your bobbin, which is in a clockwise direction. This next step is for us, it's not for the fish. We all know that the, the back end of a caddis body is like, shaped like a football and it turns down a bit. So for us, I'll go down here and wrap around partially down the bend of the hook 
and build a bulbous rear end on this thing. Now, when I wrap the dubbing on here, I don't put a lot of pressure on it. I just want it so that it, it won't move around on me. But I need something soft to bury this quill in. Okay. Okay. Bind this guy in. And we'll remove the excess. Take another, another couple of turns to make sure it's secure. And now we're going to do the trim job. When you trim this hack, this palm ring hackle, you want to trim the hackle on top of the hook shank flat down on top of the dubbing. You do not want the wing kicking up. The design of this pattern is that it is strictly horizontal. It sits on a, on a meniscus in a horizontal position and you want your wing to be horizontal also. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to trim this material off right at the dubbing level. Now, I'm going to rotate my vise, and as I rotate it, I'm going to trim the hackle and just leave a, a short stubble of hackle sticking out. Here we go. There we go. Okay, whoops, I missed some here. There we go. Got to get rid of these long things. Okay. Now it's time to set the wing on the fly. You do not want to set the wing on the bare hook shank. You want to set the wing on the last wrap of the dubbing. Because if you wrap it onto the hook shank, it's going to kick your wing up. And by the same token, you don't mount the wing by the quill. The quill, it will hinge if you do it that way. You want to capture this with your thread just behind the tip of the, the flues on the quill the tape, and you want the tape, the quill, and the flues to be bound, bound down together. Okay, I'm going to put the thread back on the last rapid dubbing with no pressure on it whatsoever. I'm going to set this wing right like so, and I'm going to take three turns with no pressure, and I'm going to pull up. You pull up on it because you do not want the wing to roll to the other side. This is an old wet fly technique that's been around for years. You don't pull down on the thread, you pull up on it when you're mounting the wing. Well, in this case, this is what you want to do. Now I can remove the quill. I don't need that anymore. You take that off. And it's time to bind your hackle in. I strip the quill. And I will bind the hackle on my side of the hook shank. Making sure that it's well secured there. And we're going to get rid of the excess quill. And 
And at this point, if you have anything sticking out in front of the fly, you want to get rid of it. You don't want to do that. Oh, where'd he go? Here he is. Where did it go, folks? Where is he? <laughs> That's a pretty good record. It's the first time this weekend I've done that. But the secret is don't panic. Okay, we're back in business. We'll get loose, get rid of this loose end here. And it's time for a little more dubbing. Somebody asked me one time, why do I always spin my, my bobbin when I touch dub the dubbing onto the thread? Well, what actually happens with the wax that I'm using, the th the dubbing wraps 360 degrees around the thread. Essentially what you're doing is creating a polyrosboro noodle without making a noodle. So then what you want to do is just mat this down so it's for a dry fry is fairly smooth. And again, this dubbing is wrapped without a lot of pressure on it because you want it soft. And this is where we are right now. Take the hackle and we're going to just work it into the dubbing. There we go. Three turns is adequate. And we'll bind this guy off. Okay. Start to build your head. And we'll trim off anything that's sticking out the front. Which you do not want because that's a mark of a, a clean head is a mark of a well-tied well fly. It says a lot about the fly tire. If you got a nasty, scruffy looking head on a fly, it's not too pleasant. Okay. Sometimes they sneak in there. Ah, get out of there. And that is the tapewing caddis. Can you, let's see, can, you can't see that if I lay it on the table, can I? Right here. Oh, right here. Oh, oh okay. That's, that's tapewing caddis. Now, you can tie these in any color you want. Somebody said to me one time, well, I have our time seeing these things. I said, well, just remember, George Harvey couldn't see his flies on the Letard either, so he used fluorescent pink wings on them, and it didn't affect the 
fishability of the fly. So I'm a firm believer that there are only three, <coughs> excuse me, three things that are important. The size, configuration, and presentation. Color is for us, not for the fish. Because they're looking up at a thing being backlit. They don't have eyes like we do. And the thing looks like a gray something on the, on the surface. And they know what size it is, though.